CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. <laughs> Welcome once again to our studios here in New York, everyone, and to Singular at the Half. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg. Halftime of a couple of games, and one of them, Kent State, on a 20-game winning streak, is looking to make it 21 against Pittsburgh. And they've only lost one game this year when they've led at halftime, so that bodes well for the Golden Flashes. Neither team shooting well. Part of it is defense, but the bigger part of it is quick shots and missed shots Boy, by both teams. We had a meeting yesterday uh, with the coaches and administrators uh, talking about the tournament. And um, one of the guys from Duke asked, what time do they play on Saturday? And I looked around, and maybe he knew I was sitting in the room. And then he went on to talk about the, the media deal five minutes after the game and all this. And so I told my guys this. I said, you know, guys, they have a great basketball team. No doubt about their basketball team. A great basketball team. But when someone disrespects us like this, we got to come out and fight. So the end. By three over Pittsburgh, 37 34. Antonio Gates right there with Trevor Huffman, both of them with 12 points right now. As Andrew Mitchell continues to be ice cold from the field, finally did get a field goal in this game. He's their second best scorer and just can't get it going offensively. One for ten, and there's a fine defensive play by Siobhan Troutman, the Pittsburgh freshman. And a whistle uh, well away from the play and a hold. Chad Johnson getting down the floor quickly, trying to establish some low post position in and around the paint. Eric Thomas credited with the foul. Kent State's first of this half, and then, oh, let misses an easy layup, a perfect inbounds play. Huffman hurries the ball the other way, and uh, the block is on Brandon. Game tied at 34 B, 17 23 remaining in the second half of play. And the scoreboards are out. And of all places, Silicon Valley. And we've got a bad chip in the house, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so John Clockerty on the sideline. And I believe it has come back on. Yes, it has. We are functioning once again. Fox went out at about the 826 mark. Don't forget, last week Survivor was television's most watched show. Now it returns to its regular day and time, CBS Thursday, with an incredible challenge. You have to see to believe catch an all-new Survivor next Thursday at 8, 7 Central here on CBS. Barnes driving to the basket. Beautiful play. And that's just the play we were talking about. Barnes is an awfully tough matchup for Trayvon Bryant away from the goal. Rush driving baseline with the step, kicks it in the corner. Gilbert rises and hits. Boy, that's a tough shot. Capona did a nice job getting out and pressuring that shot. 16.58 to play. Barnes trying to stroke it, and he does. Rattling down a three. Matt Barnes warming up 12 points to go along with six rebounds and four assists. And Gilbert running right over the freshman Bozeman. That's the second turnover this half that Clarence Gilbert has committed because he would not switch the ball to his left hand to dribble it. Remember, he 17 seconds into the game, he dislocated the ring finger on that left hand. And it's been causing him some pain. They taped it up and pulled it out on the sideline. Or pulled it out and taped it up. And that may be why he's reluctant to use that left hand. He's doing a good job on the ball defending against Bozeman. Now Barnes against Gage down the lane. How about that one? See that fella starting to feel it now. Now Gage might be able to stop his penetration, but if Barnes gets close to the basket, he can just shoot it right over top of Gage. He's got four inches on it. He's six feet six. Barnes looking inside. Capono with the steal. Finds Barnes. Here he goes. Great look in the corner. Knight sets up. Off the heel. Snatches it down and lays it in. The most versatile player on the Bruins taking over. 
Barnes, he scored their last nine points over the last 110. Now Paulding scooping. No, Johnson can't lay it in. Out of bounds, we'll stay right here. Back to San Jose right after this. Panthers have been within one here in the second half. Mitchell fights off the defender, throws up a prayer, not there, and uh, foul on uh, the Panthers' Chad Johnson. He knew it. Second on him. Ontario led, just hanging around the basket there. Can't get the ball to fall for him, but he's creating so much attention from the defense that uh, the aggressiveness of Pittsburgh Starting to get some easy baskets. They've been hard to come by for them. Mitchell talking about a hard to come by field goal gets his second of the game. Well, you can tell he's a shooter that he's not going to stop. He's been aiming a lot of his shots. He's just two for 12 right now. Let out on top with John Edwards. Oh, great pass to Troutman and he was fouled. And it might have been on Huffman. That would be his third. It was, and so each of the star shooters for these two teams, the point guards, Trevor Huffman of Kent State, and Brandon Knight Pittsburgh have three fouls. That miscommunication defensively, both players going for the player coming off the screen, and Huffman immediately talking to his teammates about it because when you do that, you're going to give up an easy one inside, even though Trapman was unable to finish. Trapman. Documented earlier, started tonight 47.7%, and now two for six from the line. As Jerron Brown, he has three fouls, returns for Pittsburgh, replacing Ontario left. One of the reasons Shabon Trapman getting a lot of playing time, he only had 12 blocks total on the year, but in the Central Connecticut State game, he had three and two in the Cal game. So Ben Hallen said, I got to get this guy on the floor. Somebody to block a shot, somebody to do something in and around the basket with some quickness. Yeah, Terry Morris has been the starter most of the season and not getting a lot of playing time now. Matchup zone for Pittsburgh, first time tonight. Kent State working it around the perimeter, and Mitchell way outside forces that three. Here in Lexington, the Panthers have rallied to within two, have the ball and a chance to tie, and a bit too eager with Siobhan Trotman trying to get that one up. Would have been an easy lay-in. Timeout, 11.45 remaining, second half. The night break catch blocked by Paulding as Knight hits the deck. Missouri has done a nice job throughout this tournament on the defensive end, but here they just don't stop Bozeman. He just keeps going. Nobody steps in front of him, makes him pick up the dribble. And that is a very effective move. Bozeman at six feet six is really a hard guy to defend once he gets into the lane because of that size. You need to make him stop and shoot the jump shot. If not, he's going to go all the way to the goal. So Billy Knight gets the first free throw to go. And from what they told us yesterday, Billy Knight may have graduated from college yesterday. He took his final exams here, and those exams were the only ones he needed to complete his coursework. So you may be looking at a graduate right now as Knight gets the second, 47 to 39. Ties their biggest lead of the game. Clocky down the lane, wraps it around, and Johnson finally getting it to stay as he jams it. He's had a couple of opportunities to jam the ball, just didn't get up high enough. It's a nice job by Missouri to make the extra pass. Kroenke draws the defense. Nobody rotates down because Kareem Rush had dribbled into the lane before and drawn the defense. Bruins by six. Now Missouri gets into a 2-3 zone. Look at the points in the paint. The story, UCLA. Bozeman down the paint, stolen away by Gage. Into the front court, Gilbert tracks it down, pulls up off the dribble, too strong. Missouri showing no patience on the offensive end. Bar, great look to Knight. How about that? That's a Magic Johnson play. 49-41, Gilbert again. And he continues to fire. 
will stay right here. When you take the quick shot, it gives the defense a chance to rebound the ball and run out. That's just great court awareness. He knew that Billy Knight was behind him, and that's a great pass to find him. That's just a tremendous play in transition. Matt Barnes, 18 points, eight rebounds, four assists. UCLA with an eight-point lead. And the Bruins, remember, they had an eight-point lead in the first half. Bonke pulls up, too strong, tapped around to Rush for three. He gets it. Rush sticking that hand right in the middle of the basket. Has ten points now. And the shooting by half, UCLA burning it up. They're Missouri getting, struggling. They're getting great shots on the Bruins. And Missouri, again, is in that hurry-up mode that got them behind in the first half. Knight inside, Gatzuri dumps it down far. That's how you shoot 69%. They're getting layups and dunks. Tell you what, this Bruins team unselfish. That ball really moves. That is the difference for them thus far in the tournament. Rush looking. Goes baseline, cut off by Gatzuri. A foul called against UCLA. UCLA doing a great job moving the ball against the zone defense, and you don't beat the zone just by passing it around the perimeter. The pass inside, Missouri mostly a man-to-man -man team, and sometimes you don't react well in the zone if you're a normal man-to-man -man team, but it's been the ability of UCLA to mismatch, to take advantage of the mismatches against Missouri in the man-to-man -man that has forced them to the zone. Rush again for three. It's a little flat. Capono tracks it down. Here comes Ryan Walcott. Guarded by Stokes. He's got Capono, Thompson, Cummings. Barnes on the court with him. Thompson. Here's Barnes. He says, get out of the way, young man. Now take it back. Missouri back to the man-to-man. -man. And here Barnes. This is the this is the mismatch that they've really been able to exploit. Crossover dribble with the step. The leader, no. Nice block out by Stokes. Greg Gumbel in New York. UCLA's lead over Missouri is 51-44. We'll get you back there shortly after we take you to Lexington and let you check in on Kent State and Pittsburgh. Let's join Dick Enberg and Matt Gukas. Here in Lexington, Kentucky, we're at the midpoint of the second half, and Pittsburgh has just taken the lead by two. Pick you up. the vital numbers with 9.59 to go. Pittsburgh hadn't led since 7-6 in the first half. Now a two-point lead. And they have out-rebounded and outshot the Kent State Golden Flashes. Huffman with 12, but with, still without a shot, isn't he, Matt? Yes, he is. And Pittsburgh, though, has cleaned up their act in the turnover department. Only one in this half. An 11-4 run for the Panthers in the last four minutes. Mitchell takes it inside. This is another. And a foul. On Mitchell of Kent State, I believe. Well, for Pittsburgh, it seems every time in this second half that Ontario led has gotten a touch, whether it's a drive to the basket off a little bit of a catch or an offensive rebound. In that case, a post play, something good has happened for Pittsburgh. So good idea for them to keep punching it inside to him. Well, thank you for something good, but something bad has just happened that was not on Kent State. It was on Brandon Knight in his fourth foul. Takes him out of the game. The leading scorer and the point guard for Pittsburgh. As Mitchell and Brandon Knight were battling for the ball on the baseline, the official indicating that Knight used a forearm to ward off Mitchell. And so he hits the free throw, and this one to tie at 45. And it is a rare occurrence anytime Brandon Knight goes out of the ballgame. In fact, in the conference games in the Big East, he averaged 39 minutes a game in 40 minute games. So Ben Hallen is going to have to, coach of Pittsburgh, is going to have to keep a close eye on this. Chad Johnson comes in, number 15. Brown inside with another easy two, and he's fouled. And the inside game of Pittsburgh, just as you predicted the first half, where they seem to be too eager to shoot outside, and they're dominating. Well, now, without Brandon Knight on the floor, it's even more important to run the offense through, and Ontario led. 
He's just drawing the defense to him, and he is a very nice passer. And bad news for Kent State. That foul was on Trevor Huffman. So the two point guards, the two leading scorers, both pick up four fouls here almost side by side. There goes our point guard matchup, at least for the time being, although I don't know how long that's going to last. At the other end of the floor, Kent State should be running their offense through their wide body, six foot five forward, Antonio Gates. Eric Hout has taken over for Huffman. He's a good three point shooter. Shaw, Mitchell, Hout on the far side, on the perimeter in this Pittsburgh defense, and that's their game, is really tightened here in the second half. And Kent State having trouble. Shaw gets an extra chance. Well, Pitt is going to the zone right now. They were doing it before to try to protect Brandon Knight defensively from picking up that fourth foul. When you go into your zone defense, you're often vulnerable in giving up second shot opportunities. Under nine minutes to go. Pittsburgh by three. Mitchell feeds underneath. And Berwig, the kid from Pittsburgh, able to battle up and score and draw the foul. Well, the book on Nate Gerberg, he's not going to get a lot of touches. He averages but five points a game. But he does have good hands and needed him on that occasion as uh, Mitchell put that pass in a very difficult situation. And as important and as good a player as Trevor Huffman, they can afford to have him sit for a little bit because uh, Andrew Mitchell can play the point guard spot for uh, Pittsburgh it's a little bit of a different story right now. Jerron Brown who played guard point guard as a backup last year but at 6'4 and a powerful build he, they moved him inside in fact his coach Ben Helen said how dumb am I to keep him in the backcourt. Shaw that's why he won the Mac award as the best defensive player in the league two years in a row. Kent State and on Shaw's first points of the game regains the lead it's 50 to 48 with 820 to go. Quick hands of the senior Dimitri Shaw from Fort Worth, Texas. So as they take a timeout in Lexington, the Golden Flashes take a two-point lead, 8.20 to play. We'll keep you updated on that game. Meanwhile, back to San Jose, West Regional Semifinal. UCLA's lead over Missouri is one. Gus Johnson, Dan Bonner. Got Zurich, Capono. Capono for three. Short, loose. Barnes with the rebound to the basket, beautifully done. Missouri with the golden opportunity there. Unable to hold on to the orange. And Barnes has 20 points and nine rebounds as UCLA gets back into the zone. And UCLA has 12 offensive rebounds in this game and a good defensive switch by Steve Lavin and it results in another turnover. That's now 15 Missouri turnovers. Bozeman to the basket. Thompson, blocked from behind, Johnson gets the rebound. Ref letting him play right now. Stokes, down the lane, wraps it around. Paulding is fouled by Barnes. Furious pace, folks. Over the last few minutes, Missouri trying to push it right at this UCLA team. And this guy turning out to be the catalyst. He has really done a nice job. And this, he draws the defense. Actually, I think he had no intention of shooting that ball. Just wanted to get the defenders to come to him. Balding missing the first free throw. And Missouri, it seems as if we saw him in Albuquerque, Dan. They look flat today. They don't look like they're playing with that same urgency they were playing with when they were in Albuquerque. They've turned it over 15 times. They've given up 13 offensive rebounds. And they are now 4 of 9 from the free throw line. And despite all of that, they still only trail in the game by 3. So here comes Bozeman creeping into the front court. Man to man for Missouri. That Zurich really wants the ball inside. He is busy and leaning on Johnson. And Johnson called for the foul over the back. And that is that is not a good play by Johnson because if Gadzurik catches the ball eight feet from the basket, Gadzurik is not really a danger out there. Gadzurik's not going to turn around and shoot the jumper. So he's about four, you know, five, six feet from the basket. You don't need to foul in there. Third foul on Arthur Johnson. Here's Barnes, loses it, mix it up. Cage diving. That's the football player's mentality. And maybe that'll get this Missouri team going. That kind of hustle. Justin Gage. 
He's been fun to watch. Now Billy Knight, along with Bozeman and Barnes, gets it, dribbles it off of his foot. You let him catch it there, just like you said, partner. He's not going to hurt you from out there. Gilbert, can he hurt him? That's too long a shot. He only made one pass. He was way, he was at least four feet beyond the three-point line. What separated this, or what this differentiated Missouri in the first two rounds, they played some unselfish basketball. Didn't force up bad shots. Took what the defense gave them, and Gilbert has hoisted up a few bad ones today. A little bit of excitement on the part of Missourians. You have to be, you want, Quinn Snyder wants his team to be excited, but you have to be able to control that excitement. When the UCLA defense gets back and gets set, Missouri really needs to pass the ball a couple of times before they shoot, if for no other reason than if they shoot it quickly, the defense doesn't have to move, and their UCLA's in great position for the defensive rebound. So here's Cedric Bozeman. Not a very good free throw shooter. There's Barnes with the rebound. He can't get the follow. Here comes Mizzou. Let's see if Gilbert makes a better decision on this trip. Rush hasn't touched it very much. Here he is on the baseline for three. There we go. Move the ball around, force the defense to react. And we are tied at 57. There's a buzz in the building now, folks. This game has had the most schizophrenic personality <laughs> yeah. of any game I can remember in a long time. Bozeman changing gears, gets to the bucket, and UCLA wants a timeout. 8.01 to go in the second half of play. We've got a two-point game. Armacatan back in Lexington. As you can see at the end of the Indiana Duke game, there was an incident involving a Duke player, Matt Christensen, where he had to be restrained by the managers of his team. I'm joined now by Kevin Weiberg, the commissioner of the Big 12 and a basketball committee member. Kevin, what can you tell me about the incident, which I also understand was involved with Bruce Benedict, the referee? Well, we've received a report similar to what you just mentioned, and we are trying to gather more information about it at this time. Uh, as committee, we try to get as much information as we can when these kinds of things occur, and we're really still just in the information gathering mode. Well, one of the things I was able to talk to a security guard who was an, told me he was an eyewitness to the account, and he said that Benedict was pushed by Christensen and actually had his right arm pulled back before he was pulled off by the managers. Do you know much? Did you talk to Bruce, and can you comment on that? Well, I really can't comment about the specifics of it. points for Gilbert Bozeman the freshman taking an ill-advised shot Gage climbing up high for the rebound here come the Tigers it's Rush quick fire got it again and the three-point shot has come back for the Tigers left them early now they're starting to hit him when they get it going, they can score a lot of points in a big hurry. UCLA needs to get something down on the offensive end. Barnes on the baseline. No, Gadzurek with the rebound. Thompson down the lane looking for Gadzurek, knocked away out of bounds. We'll stay right here. 6.41 to go, 63-59 Mizzou. seen him limp back to the other end of the floor. He's not uh, defending now against Huffman because of the four foul situation. Gates spinning. Eric Thomas falls. Gates fires. 59-53. Antonio was 16. That was a fortuitous fall and bounce right to his teammate. Well, he scores on a regular basis at about 16 a game, but he, they definitely need his points tonight with Mitchell struggling so much as Brandon Knight now trying to take over in every way. That's the fourth tray that he's hit tonight. 57% reach came after both clubs struggled desperately to make a shot in the first half. So what happened to all the good defense? <laughs> Everybody was crediting that horrible shooting in the first half. I think it was more a case of horrible offense instead of good defense. I think your point that the 
the Duke loss it just impacted everyone. They had to wait till after 10 o'clock to start this game, and when all the new noise and news came out, uh, both teams started to say, "Ooh, what, what does that mean to us?" <laughs> We may not even be thinking about this game. We might be thinking about the final four. Inside, wide open is Johnson, and Huffman very That's close to the foul. Johnson. Had to pull back. First points for Johnson. 59-58, Kent State, 4.20 to go. Kent State's got to run the offense through Antonio Gates. He's the only one that can get something going, either with his own shot or with his passing ability. State looks a little tired at this point. Not a lot of movement. There's Gates. Makes his move inside and the foul. And it's going to be on Antonio Gates for the charge. Both teams in the bonus. Third on Gates. And the only senior on this Pittsburgh team, Chad Johnson, going to step up and take the hard hit. change the energy level of the Tigers and the, the Missouri didn't even get the ball but watch Justin Gage as he tries to get it to dive out of bounds and at that point the tempo of the game changed it's been one run by UCLA then a run by Missouri right at the moment it's Missouri on the run and can UCLA now answer Bozeman inbounding looking for Gatzurik Ball deflected, Gatzurik posting up Johnson. Baseline jump hook, no. Arthur Johnson tough today. He's been blocking out the 6'11 Gatzurik as he snatches down his ninth rebound of the game. Can't let Gatzurik shoot layups or dunk the ball. Steal, Barnes, he's got the Pono with him. And Barnes fouled hard. And Barnes wanted to go at Kroenke. And Barnes doing a good job restraining himself there, controlling his emotions. He's the best player on the floor right now. And Steve Lavin is claiming that that should be an intentional foul. But I'll tell you what, Kroenke committed a hard foul. But Kroenke made a play on the ball and didn't endanger Barnes at all. And so I think that's a good call to not call that an intentional foul. Matt Barnes, to take a look at his tournament average, he misses the first. On the season, a 62% free throw shooter as Snyder gets Crocky out of the game. And Crocky, well aware of Barnes's free throw shooting percentage, didn't want to give him an easy one. And I, that's a very fine line that you walk, a hard foul so he can't get it off. Second one good for Barnes. He has 21, 63-60, Mizzou. Rush. Down the lane, frees himself, blocked by Gatsurik, but he goes in. He laid it up high enough. And that's why Kareem Rush can be so dangerous. If you get out on the perimeter, guard him, he can go right by you. Now Barnes, straight to the basket, the lob, and a whistle, a foul call against Paulding. And really, when they try, when you Look at the vital numbers. Each team in the bonus. Key thing is uh, the four fouls on the two top players in the game. The point guards, Brandon Knight of Pittsburgh and Trevor Huffman, Kent State. Gates with 16 and Huffman 15 to lead Kent State. Knight with 14, Page and Brown with 12. Big key in this second half, Pittsburgh taking much better care of the basketball, getting a ton of good looks at the basket. There's one for Julius Page. And he gives Pittsburgh the lead 60 59. Three and a half minutes to go. Starting unit for Kent State on the floor. Gates working on Knight, trying to involve him. Knight falls, no foul. Eric Thomas, the senior veteran, hits the corner jumper, a two-pointer. Seven for him. Well, Antonio Gates is the playmaker, and he doesn't always have to be the guy scoring the points. It's just that he has that ability. He'll draw the defense. He can put the ball on the floor. Knight misses the three, and the foul is on Ontario left. Based on the reaction, it would be his third. 
Well, it's coming down uh, toward the final four, the Elite Eight on Saturday and Sunday. And here in Lexington, Indiana has made it to the Elite Eight. First time in nine years for the Hoosiers. Pittsburgh and Kent State with that opportunity and so close once you get to the weekend, this weekend, to think Final Four. Ben Howland, what a job. The coach of the year is voted by his colleagues. 29 wins, the winningest team in Pittsburgh history. And Thomas comes in off the bench and contributes just as Chad Johnson, the only senior for Pittsburgh, has made a couple of key plays here down the stretch. Eric Thomas just 67 percent from the free throw line looked very sharp on that one so Kent State getting a solid game from Eric Thomas and Pittsburgh getting one from Chad Johnson kind of like counterparts in their particular roles for their team 63 60 Kent leading Pittsburgh 258 to go. Mitchell on him. Zabotskis and Thomas inside to Jerron Brown. Can't hit the jumper. Battle for the rebound. Who's got it? Here in Lexington, Kentucky, the Kent State Golden Flashes relinquished the lead to Pittsburgh here in the second half, but now have regained it at 63 60 with 2.39 to go. Pittsburgh inbounding the ball. That's Julius Page. He hits again. He's made a couple of clutch jumpers here in the last two minutes. 63-62. He loves the corners, in particular that right one, and perfect execution on the out-of-bounds play to free up a very solid middle-distance jump shooter, Julius Page. Gates, oh, what a pass underneath to Thomas. Didn't travel, say the officials. Pitt fans were yelling for it. Being hawked by left. Pretty good defense by the big guy let out on the perimeter, but he lost them. Thomas for three. Oh my! The senior reserve Eric Thomas with 12. It was almost like let ran out of gas on his individual defense and then just moved back into the lane area, leaving Eric Thomas not known for his outside shooting wide open. Eric Thomas his season high with a dozen points. We're under two minutes. Page again. Three in a row for the sophomore from Buffalo, New York. It's 66 64. Julius Page leads the Panthers with 18. And a timeout, Pittsburgh, with 138 to go. Tonight. And then Eric Thomas at the other end as Ontario let, left him wide open. And then Page again feeling it right now. Wants the ball in his hands. And he can deliver not only with the jump shot. Shows that he can put it on the floor and get something going to the basket. And they don't want to forget Let at the other end of the floor. But they're going to have to because he's out of the game right now. I think he's tired. 130 left. 66-64. Kent State with a 20-game winning streak. With a two-point lead, Trevor Huffman working on Page. Gates wanted Huffman to make a break for the basket. Down to 11 on the shot clock. Huffman inside, traveled, no basket, and he made it. Took an extra hop, and with 1-12, here comes Pittsburgh. And watch out for Page. Julius Page, number one, has been number one in the tournament for the Panthers. 17 in the win against Cal to lead the team. 16 against Central Connecticut State. 18 tonight. And they're going to get Huffman off Page. That's who he's been scoring one against, putting Demetri Shaw, their best defensive player, on there, trying to shut him down. And Knight with some fancy dribble moves. He goes in and ties it up. Brandon Knight ties it with 52 seconds to go. We've got a couple players for Pittsburgh out on the floor right now. Page and Brandon Knight both want the ball in their hands at crunch time. And at Kent State, I'm not sure right now who exactly wants it. Trevor Huffman looks very tentative. Stan Heath wants timeout. Brandon Knight clutch it in the final minute. Kent State leading the entire first half basically and by six at halftime finally caught by Pittsburgh at 45 43. We've been seesawing ever since and down to 44 seconds. Kent State with a ball 27 seconds on the shot clock 44 on the game clock. Strangely again Trevor Huffman 
with just one shot in the second half. That Antonio Gates has been the go-to guy. They want to get him the ball and let him go to work on Jerron Brown. And quite a battle, Brown and Gates. Gates up with a shot, he scores! Oh, the call is a jump ball! How? Oh my goodness. Where was that? And the possession arrow to Pittsburgh. Oh my, they have to restrain Stan Heath. Maybe on the replay we can see the jump ball. I don't see it still. That's a terrible call in that any time. But definitely in that situation, that was a strong move by Antonio Gates and should have been, if anything, an opportunity going for a three-point play. A phantom call goes against Stan Heath. That's still tied. Two fifty two to go here in the second half of play Missouri with the seventy three sixty five lead. Now here's the question. Why is that kid in the game right now with two fifty two to play. Put your best player in the game the freshman Bozeman. It's a good question. Why is he in the game. We I'm going to ask that question. Can I ask you that question. Sure. Or would you rather be not. No no go ahead. Why is this kid in the game right now? That doesn't make any sense. How many minutes? Oh, we don't have minutes on this. Kid. A very strange call under these circumstances not to take anything away from the defense of Jerron Brown doing his best to try to hold up. Yeah he's got his hand on the ball. The only thing the official could say is that he had his hand on the ball and that Antonio Gates came down first and hit his feet on the floor. But that is really cutting it close and Stan he extremely unhappy and he's got a right under these circumstances. What a break for Pittsburgh. It's tied at 66 25 seconds to go. Kent State's 20 game winning streak. Pittsburgh looks at a win here on this final possession. Brandon Knight with Mitchell. Shot right. clock off down to 10. I would be surprised if Brandon Knight gave this up. He's going to try to take it all the way down and get that last shot in the lane. Here he goes. No, it's to Page, the hot shooter, misses that one, and Mitchell rebounds as the buzzer sounds. We're going to overtime in game two in Lexington. Chorus of booze rain down from the 22,000. Oh, my. Mizzou and Missouri's got the ball out of bounds. They UCLA was trying to throw it inside to get Zurich and they just threw it right out of bounds. The CBS Sports Line stat of the game three point field goal shooting this half. Seven of 13 for the Tigers get complete tournament coverage at CBS.sportsline.com or on America Online. Keyword CBS Sports Line. Here's the press rush. Double team in the backcourt, fouled from behind by Barnes. 2.49 to go. UCLA led by as many as eight, but Missouri has come storming back here in the second half of play. It has been a game of runs. Missouri was behind by eight in the first half. They rallied to take the lead at halftime. UCLA came out, started the second half very quickly, and Missouri struggling from the line. Arthur Johnson had the rebound, taken right away by Knight. And here comes Ryan Walcott into the front court. Two thirty three to play here in the second half and Missouri leads UCLA seventy three sixty five. They've hit seven threes in the second half of play inside that went up and in for Ricky Paulding. The nice. Tigers trying to advance to the Elite Eight for the first time since 95. To become the first 12 seed ever to advance to the Elite Eight. And you don't want to foul in that situation because it gives UCLA the chance to catch up without any time running off the clock. All right, a look at the game summary. 48% shooting for Missouri. They started slowly. Game and won that one. 
and going back to that last offensive play for Brandon Knight in Pittsburgh he made the right pass because he was cut off but I thought he would do a little bit more of spinning into the lane to try to get off a high, higher percentage shot or at least get fouled on the play. Kent State first possession of this five minute period each team gets an extra timeout. Remember now the two key players although Huffman has disappeared in terms of shooting in the second half. Huffman tonight with four fouls. <laughs> Just in case, Antonio Gates said, call this one a tie hey, He's not going to mess around. He's not going to go near anybody's hand. I mentioned Knight about going to the free throw line. He has not gone to the line tonight. He really labors there at just 44%. So that's maybe why he did not try to get fouled, not wanting to go to the line in that crucial situation. Julius Page off the ground, double teamed, and Mitchell knocks it away. Another defensive play by Andrew Mitchell. Huffman looks over at Stan Heath. He says, slow it down. And he doesn't in the pass. Errant, and that means Lett will tie it up at the other end. Huffman got caught in the air. Six points now for Lett. Outstanding defensive play by Ontario Lett to knock the ball loose. Keep in mind now, the two point guards, Brandon Knight and Trevor Huffman, both with four personal fouls. Andrew Mitchell now running the point. Huffman hawked by Page underneath. And Gates sees Jerron Brown. Bump into him. The foul on Brown will be his foul. That's been a very quiet second half for Trevin, Trevor Huffman. Had 12 points in the first half, one three pointer in the second, and really go away nowhere in particular and just laid the ball out there for Let to knock it loose. Time he said, Yeah, he wants to show him. 2.07 to play. Missouri with a 77 66 lead over UCLA. Here's Bozeman. Desperation time now for the Bruins. Knight down the lane, the leader with English. Gilbert in the backcourt. And remember, UCLA has no timeouts left, so they cannot stop the clock. Rush. Now they pull it out and decide to milk the clock. Double team to Tonda taken away by Capono. And Capono fouled. Coming up the floor. Nice move. Well, that's the kind of play I was expecting at the end of regulation play. But I think he's a little bit, he's thinking a little bit too much right now with those four personal fouls. He wants to make sure he stays on the floor. And tonight matching, nearly matching his number. That's 18 points for him. He and Page with 18 to lead the Panthers. Gates to Huffman. Three minutes to go in overtime. Ken on the shot clock. Huffman denied. And Brown embraces it for Pittsburgh. Trevor Huffman totally out of sync in this second half. Big reason he's doing a lot of standing around. And many times just gives the ball up and stands in the same position. He's got to get himself on the move. Mitchell bats it away from Knight. Covers with 17 on the shot clock, two and a half minutes to go. Tied at 70. The Hoosiers of Indiana await the winner Saturday's regional final. Knight with three, Knight with two. Well short, but Zavatskis gets it back. Hit the rim. Oh, he didn't hit the rim. I thought it did. Yeah, it hit the rim. And the officials are going to talk about it and quickly correct there. And this is a correctable error if there is one. They can look at a replay if they want. Yeah, this is going to glance off the right side of the rim, and Donata Zavatska is going to wind up with the ball. And a good job of the officials coming together very, very quickly. Now, Pittsburgh wants to be delivered in their half court offense. Sometimes they go too far, and when the shot clock winding down, they have a tough time getting a good shot at the basket. That one was too quick by Page. Hit the side of the board, and how Gates was able to get that rebound without fouling it just shows his talent. Gates has become not only the scorer inside, but really the point center coming outside to set up plays. There he is working against Deron Brown. Brown with four fouls. Gates sets up Mitchell for three. Zabotskis 
Takes it away from his teammate Led, who goes tumbling into the corner. It's tied at 70. 138 to go. Both teams a bit wary. Zabats gets handoff tonight. Dimitri Shaw trying to keep the ball out of the hands of Brandon Knight, which is always a good idea. Make other players make the decision, although this guy can make some good ones. Ontario left to Brown with six, with five, and it trickles with a foul. Is that on Huffman? I think it's Gates. Line, he's fouled. And we'll go to the line, the young man from Fort Lauderdale. In this kind of a situation, you would prefer that the ball stay moving so they can't foul you, but in particular, you're Clarence Gilbert, you don't want to be taking the thing and dribbling it toward one of the corners. And how tough is this young man? 17 seconds into the game, he dislocated his ring finger on his, on his left hand. He went to the sideline. The trainer pulled it out. He 5% as a team. 8 for 14 tonight as Siobhan Troutman returns to the lineup for the Panthers and Ontario Lett rested. This for the pit lead. 71-70, and the kid from right here in Lexington, Kentucky, Jerron Brown, gives his team the lead. One minute. Huffman, a strong drive, and he scores, and Kent State leads 72-71. Uh, that was beautifully set up by Trevor Huffman, just a little misdirection going to his left so he could get a, a little head of steam going back to his favorite right hand and that little kiss off the glass. Knight comes back the other way, partially blocked, controlled by Gates, and a foul reaching around. The foul will be on Brandon Knight, and that'll be all for him. Knight pulling the jersey over his face. Disappointment. Leads with 18 points, five rebounds, five assists. Clearly frustration on the part of Brandon Knight, upset with himself for missing a shot he felt he should have made and just could not keep his hand out of the cookie jar after he really got up a very weak attempt there. And then reaching in, trying to get it all back in one fell swoop with the steal. And there's that head of steam by Trevor Huffman going back to his right hand. Loves to use that glass on the right side. 41 seconds remaining. And to the line at the other end goes Antonio Gates, this powerful junior from Detroit, Michigan. State champions. He was uh, second Mr. Basketball. Averaging 15 a year. And what a pickup this year for this Kent State team that uh, showed its... And Quinn Snyder, what a masterful job galvanizing this team when it counted most. And this, this is the type of a game that really tries a coach's patience. He's seen his team turn the ball. Normally shoot it so poorly. The big question is, depending on what Gates does here at the free throw line, is who's going to handle the ball effectively for Pittsburgh going the other way? They've got to get the ball into the hands of Ontario Lett. At some point, he's coming in the game right now. But that's been an adventure. It's a double bonus situation for Kent State. As perform that way for you, you generally can have some success. And UCLA is throwing in the towel. They have put the subs into the game, taking out Gatzurik. And flashes of Kent State with 40 seconds left. And it's Jerron Brown. Played his high school ball here, twice in All-State here in Kentucky. Badgered by Dimitri Shaw. Unable to hit in the corner. Zavatskis, Mitchell with the ball. Foul by Johnson. The Kent State fans on their feet. A great post defense by Arthur Johnson using his... 265 pound frame on Gadzurik, who's 240. And there's Stokes going out of the game, and he really played well for Missouri today. He only has he only has four points in the game, but he's got three rebounds and three assists. Now Walcott down the lane, lays it up and in with 39.2 to go. 
Rush to Gilbert. He'll hold on. And Missouri needs to just dribble off the clock. About a three-second difference, so they'll have to shoot it. And a timeout called by Missouri. will step away with 21-9 to go. A long, long three. Almost banked in. Left follows it with six seconds left. And it's quick timeout used by Coach Ben Howland. 6.3 seconds remain in Lexington. So Missouri will advance into the Elite Eight, and they will take on conference mate Oklahoma for a trip to the Final Four. Those two teams met once this year. It was a 13-point Sooner victory in Norman, Oklahoma. And a backdoor violation. Michael Griffin going over the line with 11.9 to go. And look at Quinn Snyder. He's still coaching. He's still telling his guys what to do. And now we got to be careful over there. Somebody tripped the plug for the scoreboard earlier. <laughs> Here's Walcott. 8.8. .8. Patterson. No good on the play. And the Missouri Tigers head to the Elite Eight. It will be an all Big 12 regional final. 82-73, the final. Now let's go to Brett Dunley. And we'll send you to Lexington, Kentucky. Five and a half seconds to play. Kent State leads it by three. Dick Enberg and Matt Gukas. Chad Johnson with four fouls. And Andrew Mitchell, 10 points in the game. Four for four from the line. Missouri has beaten UCLA in the West, so it's Missouri and Oklahoma, a Big 12 battle in the Elite Eight on Saturday in San Jose. Well, Andrew Mitchell has struggled mightily from the field, just three for 16. But he's an exceptional free throw shooter, five for five right now. And ben. also had six steals to go along with uh, the tough offensive night, so he kept his head in the game at the defensive end. Mitchell a perfect six for six for the line gives uh, Kent State a 78 73 lead and if there's a Cinderella team at this point certainly in the south it is Kent State as Brown misses and the golden flashes with the longest winning streak in the nation make it 21. They had never been to the sweet 16. How's it going to feel in the elite eight. Mid-American Conference will they be the upset team to go to a Final Four? Would that be something? Kent State will have its chance. They will meet the Indiana Hoosiers, number 10 against number 5 on Saturday. Players of the game, Antonio Gates for Kent State. What a game he had. And Julius Page brought Pittsburgh back in the second half, but not quite enough. So the final score, game two here in Lexington, Kentucky. Kent State advances 78 73. Greg Gumbel, right after this word. Want to remind you, coming up after your late local news, stay tuned for the Emmy Award winning late show tonight. Dave welcomes actor Josh Hartnett and the top 10 ways Oprah Winfrey can improve her show. That's tonight on Dave. Tomorrow we'll be with you at 7.30 Eastern Time and we'll begin in the East with Southern Illinois and number two Yukon in the Midwest. Texas will take on Oregon. Our late games feature top seed Maryland against Kentucky in the East and top seed Kansas against Illinois in the Midwest. And Saturday's lineup, the road to the Final Four comes your way at noon Eastern Time at one o'clock, the Division II Championship game. Road to the Final Four again at 3.30 and then at 4.30 Eastern Time, number 12 Missouri takes on number two Oklahoma it will mark the first time ever a Big 12 team will make the Final Four. At 7 Eastern time, Kent State will take on number 5, Indiana. That is Saturday's lineup. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg.
it's been a fairly decent day. Let's run down some of the scores for you. Let's run down all the scores. In fact, in Lexington, Kent State over Pittsburgh by a score of 78 to 73. The Golden Flashes sowed some real grit. They really did. Their defense held a minute, then their excellent free throw shooting down the stretch. The difference in overtime. Meanwhile, in San Jose, the Missouri Tigers held on to beat UCLA by a score of 82 to 73. Quinn Snyder's team growing up late in the season. They really are three-point shooting, a big factor in that second half comeback for Missouri. The game of the night in Lexington earlier this evening, Indiana over Duke 74 to 73. Let's pick it up with Indiana's Jared Jeffries grabbing the rebound off the missed free throw, lays it in, Duke leads by one. One minute to go, Indiana, the game is tied. The first lead for the Hoosiers, Tom Coverdale with the friendly bounce. Now, 10 seconds to play. Duke's Daniel Ewing misses the three. The ball comes to Jason Williams, gets the rebound, hits the three, draws the foul. Indiana's lead is 74-73. We go to Dick Edinburgh. He misses the free throw. Moser gets the rebound and tipped again. Rebounded by Indiana. The game is over. No, I'm not stunned. I mean, I, I'm 55 and I need a hip replaced. I'm, uh, you know, I mean, I coach a game where I know that we can lose every time we go on the court. The people who watch the game don't understand that. Something else you'll hear about that game tomorrow. At the end of the Indiana Duke game, Blue Devil senior forward Matt Christensen had to be restrained by Duke personnel, including Coach K, as official Bruce Benedict walked past the Blue Devil's bench on his way to the locker room. According to NCAA committee member Kevin Weiberg, the NCAA is investigating that incident. Indiana moves on to play Kent State in the South. And in San Jose, Oklahoma qualifies to move on to meet Missouri because Oklahoma beat Arizona by a score of 88 to 67. That does it for this Thursday evening. We'll be back at 7.30 Eastern time again tomorrow night with more on the road to the Final Four. For Clark Kellogg and for all of us here at CBS Sports, I'm Greg Gumbel. See you tomorrow. Yeah.